If you've been here for a while, you'll probably remember the video I shot about this very item back in 2013. If you're a newer viewer here on the UXW Bill channel, go ahead and pause this video right now, watch the original, and come back. I'll be happy to wait for you. In fact, while I'm waiting for you, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll unplug my awesome box fan that I've put up here in the computer mess room window so that it won't be making so much noise and causing complaints about the nature of the soundtrack from those of you in the viewing audience. Hello there everyone, I am of course UXW Bill, and in tonight's video we're going to be revisiting, that's right, we're going to be revisiting something that I talked about previously. This is the Frank Franklin Spelling Ace model number SA98, manufactured by Franklin Computer, and as you can see this time, I actually have the whole darn thing. I didn't need another one of these, but when I saw the price at an area thrift store a couple of years ago, I figured that I'd at least look inside the box and see if the books happened to be there. And what do you know they were? Things were looking up all the time. In fact, just before I went to make this video and I moved my keyboard out of the way, <laughs> things really did get better. I found a hundred dollar bill under the keyboard. I had no idea it was there. Just absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, I'm just waiting for fate to nail me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hit some of the highlights here on the box. Right here on the front, you'll see that this is called out as the second edition. I have no idea what the first edition actually is, or what it would look like. I know that when I went looking for information about the other example of this product that I did a video about, that Franklin still had a manual on their website for something they called an SA-98, but it was clearly a very different product as it indicated a dot matrix display and several word games, where this has a 16 segment display and of course no word games. Now there are some people out there who really aren't very bright, whose lives are apparently dictated by reality TV. Just watch me get caned for this in the comments. And they like to call me a hoarder and other unkind things. But I will say that anything I keep around here, I definitely put to use. And so it is that the first Franklin Spelling Ace came into use some time ago, when my mother, who is a professor at a college for uh, art, she teaches an introduction to art class, um, she made a crossword puzzle for her students and forgot what some of the words were, couldn't find them anywhere. So we popped them into the Franklin Spelling Ace and it came up with the answer. And let me tell you, when it came to scoring brownie points, I certainly did in a very, very big way because I more or less saved the day. But getting back to the actual product here, let's take a look at what the box actually says. We finally do get some specifications here. Gives you some idea as to its capabilities. And if you want to read any of these, you can certainly pause the video at any point. There's the barcode for the product. Pictures of it in profile. You've already seen the picture of the front. Franklin Computer Corporation. Made in Hong Kong. Quite well packaged but for as far as it would have come around the world, and given what the shipping people like to do to things that are entrusted to their care while in transit, it makes sense that they would have done an exceptional job of packaging this unit. Here's the user's manual. I'm obviously not going to go through every part of this, but at some point I may very well scan it, and if you would like to pause the video to read any portion of it, you are most certainly welcome to do so. We'll just flip through the various pages here. This manual does reveal some capability that I was unaware of in this unit. Perhaps you can figure out what those things are. I would actually demonstrate them, but the truth of the matter is I don't have any batteries in this one. I don't remember if it came with batteries or not. I don't think that it did, and I certainly did not put any in there because I wasn't planning on using it as regularly as I do the other one. And like I say, the other one does get fairly regular use. They mention certain words that are not in the unit's memory. You can see subrogation, hematoma, or discriminant. 
I'd love to try those out right now and see whether or not they are in fact actually there. But in, in the event that they are not, well, maybe I'll try it on the other unit and we'll see what happens with it. They mention it's being of great use to crossword puzzle solvers. And I would imagine that is likely to be true. Here's the final page regarding the operation of the unit. And then finally, a question that came up when I made the original video. And that was in regard to the nature of this thing's computing capabilities. And believe it or not, the manual actually does go into detail on this. We were able to figure out that the CPU is obviously a Z80, or if you're across the pond, a Z80, although that always sounds weird to me. It's clocked at 4 megahertz, pretty good for the time, the late 1980s it seems. The support circuitry is called out as containing 128 kilobytes of ROM, 2 kilobytes of RAM, and other circuits like that Plessy component that we were not necessarily able to concretely identify, but that a lot of people felt was something like an uncommitted logic array, which was used to tie together the various other components, the ROM, the RAM, the microcontroller. We also find out what proximity technology was. That was apparently the company that was behind the compressed storage format and the lookup algorithm for the words. But when you think about the capabilities of this Franklin Spelling Ace as compared to a lot of computers of the time, certainly there were more powerful computers available. 286 and 386 equipped systems were a thing, and the 486 was right around the corner at the time. But many people were still rocking computers like the Apple II Plus, the Apple II GS, the Commodore 64, and they were perfectly happy. IBM PC XTs. By comparison, this thing is actually surprisingly powerful for the time, especially since back then microcontrollers were not cheap and ubiquitous like they are today. And then here, of course, is the final page of the user's manual, talking about the copyright, 1987, for the product itself. The dictionary is copyrighted from 1986, and then it goes into details on the trademarks. And then... There is a United States patent number that I would definitely encourage everyone watching this to look up because it might contain some very interesting information. There are, some, there are of course, some add-in documents. They talk about adjusting the display contrast. I knew how to do this on the first unit that I made a video about. I could not honestly tell you how at this point. Unless, of course, the manual for what Franklin considered it to be an SA-98 was similar enough that it clued me in. But they tell you how to adjust the display contrast to make it darker or lighter. Obviously, if you make the display darker, you would be using up the battery faster. actually says the same thing on both sides and in the English language. And then here is the product registration blank and the Franklin Computer Corporation limited warranty. And I have no idea how that will actually come through on the video, but again, you're welcome to pause the video and read it if you can. I think there's also registration information in here. And part of me says, oh, I'd love to send one of these into the company and see if they actually do anything like say, hey, you have one of our really old products and it's really cool that you sent this in. Here's something awesome. Franklin, of course, is certainly still around, though they aren't known as Franklin Computer Corporation any longer. And as mentioned in the previous video, Franklin was actually a manufacturer of personal computers at one point. They very famously cloned the hardware of the Apple II personal computer and then directly copied Apple's ROMs, thinking that the software within those ROMs would not be subject to copyright. And while it bounced through the courts a few times, ultimately things did not come out in Franklin Computer's favor. Seemingly, they also produced a PC-compatible product, but it enjoyed nothing like the success of their Apple II clone. And then, of course, inside the foam clamshell is the spelling ace itself. And this one is in very, very good condition. I would imagine that most of these did not see a whole lot of use once the novelty had worn off. Even the battery compartment is very, very clean. So, thank you for watching. I certainly hope that this little 
revisit of something that I had made a video about previously has proven interesting. As always, I really do thank you for watching, and I am certainly always interested in hearing your constructive commentary. So please do feel free to leave a comment if you should happen to have one.